Okay, so we now know that what the energy density is of an electromagnetic wave anywhere at the point in space. Um, this is a point, the units of this are joules per meters cubed. Um, so now that we have this equation, uh, we can look at the energy an electromagnetic wave would transport uh, per unit time per unit area. Um, uh, this is the energy flux due to an electromagnetic wave. Now, the energy flux is given by the Ponting vector. Now, this is uh, labeled as an S with the usual vector subs uh, superscript, and it's actually in units of uh, watts per meters squared. Now, the Ponting vector is, as I said, a vector, and thus has both direction and a magnitude. Now, the direction of this vector is actually quite easy to work out as it is in the direction of which the energy is transported. So that's the direction that the wave is transversing. Okay, so in order to work out the energy transported uh, by an electromagnetic wave, we're going to imagine we have a volume uh, here. So this volume here has this large side, has an area, say, A, and the distance here um, no, I'm going to scratch that. Scratch that. Okay, so the magnitude of the Ponting vector is the energy flux. Um, so we're going to imagine for a second that we've got uh, a wave passing through our area A. So let's say that this area here is A. Um, so it is uh, transversing through perpendicular. Um, Good. Um, so in the short time sort of dt that our uh, wave here, I should probably draw in a wave, um, so make this a little distance here. So in the short time dt, the distance it travels would be c, the speed of light, because um, waves like this travel at the speed of light, times dt, the amount of time. Okay, so the energy that passes through this area A in the time dt occupies the volume and we'll call it dB, which is equal to A, the area, multiplied by dx, which is C, dt. From before, we know that the energy density um, from an electromagnetic wave is equal to this. And so the total energy, which we're going to call du for fun, d large u, will be equal well, so the total energy du inside our volume, dv, um, is literally just going to be u times dv. So our uh, total energy in our volume A uh, by dx um, is equal to this. So, um, however, what we actually want is the energy flux, which is the energy per area per time. So to get that, um, we need to divide uh, this equation here uh, by the area and by the time that we're looking at. So uh, because we happen to know that the energy flux is equal to the magnitude of the Ponting vector, um, we just divide it by the area. Um, so we have our, and divide it by our unit of time, which comes out to be this. So this is the magnitude of our pointing vector. So um, now, just like before, we can uh, rearrange this equation so it has both uh, the electric field and magnetic field strengths. Um, so from that, uh, we can get this. Um, so uh, we actually want the pointing vector in terms of both the electric and magnetic field strengths uh, because it's a vector. Um, this will make more sense in a second. Um, so to do that we do the same rearrangements that we were doing earlier on. Okay, so this is the magnitude of the pointing vector in terms of both the electric and magnetic field strengths. Now, the direction of the Ponting vector, as I mentioned before, is perpendicular to both the electric and magnetic fields. So, uh, because it's perpendicular to this, 
um, we can actually use uh, a cross product. Um, so if we write the cross product of the electric field and magnetic field um, using vectors, um, we get this. So substituting this in, we get both the magnitude and direction of the pointing vector um, equal to this equation here. So this gives us the energy flux of our, electromagnetic, uh, our electromagnetic wave in units of watts per meters squared.